For those of you who know me, you know that I tell you what your pastor does not tell you. I say things that your famous and favorite evangelists just do not say. I tell you truths that either they do not know or they are too afraid to tell you. And so often I get people who come to me and they're like scriptural machine guns. It's like they got like, you know, a, a string of scriptures that they shoot at me. And it's always the same ones, okay? I've, I've heard it so many times over. And so I got a comment, and this is a typical comment like this. And so I'm going to read this. Now, I'm going to do uh, a, a few videos on this comment because there's so much. It's like, how many errors, how many errors can you pack in one paragraph? Now, this comment was posted on a video that I called Solved. How did Jesus fulfill the law? And I just basically explain that when Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law, in the original context, in the cultural context, in the ancient Jewish context, and according to Christianity's trusted uh, Greek source, Thayer's Greek lexicon, that word, which is translated plerao, means to cause God's will as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be. So I basically said, well, Jesus came to obey the law. Jesus came to obey his father's law. Very simple. And if you want to be like Jesus, you do the same thing. WWJD, what would Jesus do? He would obey the law. If you want to be like Christ, if you want to be Christ-like, what do you do? You obey the law. This person posted this comment. Jesus said, it is finished. John chapter 19, verse 30. Notice the spelling of John, J-O-N. This person continued saying, the debt was paid in full. Therefore, don't reject the complete work on the cross or the grace. Modern day evangelists have reduced the gospel to nothing more than a sales pitch. I've heard this so many times. You know, Jesus said, it is finished just before he died on the cross. And that means that he completely finished all of what he had to do to seal salvation. Salvation has been purchased. It is done. Nothing more needs to be done. End of story. Everything's done on the cross. Sounds lovely. Sounds so Christian. It sounds so good. It sounds like it's, it's scripture. The problem is, it's not. This word that is translated, it is finished, is from the original Greek, teleo. It's exactly the same word that Paul used just before he died in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have finished the course, okay? Teleo, it's exactly what Jesus said. In context, the word teleo was used as a figure of speech that just simply means, I'm about to die. I mean, that's all it meant. I'm about to die. Paul used it. Jesus used it. That's basically all it meant. Now, it means that in the context of its use in Scripture, we can't be so shallow just to take a word and look up just the strict little definition of that word and not look at the way it is used in context and in the culture. It's like saying we chop the tree down and then we cut it up. I mean, if you look at it very strictly, I mean, okay, so you chop the tree down, you cut it up. So how do you cut it up? You, you rebuild the tree again? You cut it so that it goes back up? I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to look at the word and how it is used in order to understand what it means. The second thing this person said is the debt is paid in full. Now, for those of you who are not really familiar with what this means, Let's go over to an excerpt here out of the uh, website called thegospelintheraw.org. It says, Did you know that there is a payment we owe that is much more serious than taxes? Keep in mind, any payment that you would owe has to be a thing of value. Here, of course, is talking about money in regards to taxes. Did you know that there is a payment we owe that is much more serious than taxes? That is the payment that we owe for our sin. Oh, where does it say that in the scriptures? Oh, it's like God's up there on a, on a cash register saying, okay, how much, is, how much sin do you want to do? Okay, now this is what you owe me. It's, pay up this much. Oh, how much sin did you do? Oh, this is what, okay, pay up this much. 
The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And since every person has sin, that means we all owe our very lives. It's talking about the wages of sin. Wages of sin is what is owed you, not what you owe someone else. Okay, again, there's a total twist in definitions here. Now, of course, the wages of sin is death is something that Paul wrote, basically saying if you sin that you're going to you're going to die. You know, that's what you earn for your for your sin. You earn death. And in context, it's talking about eternal death. And this kind of death is a spiritual state. It doesn't mean non-existence, okay? This is not talking about dying and then just not existing. This is talking about a spiritual state of death, of darkness. See, Paul wrote to many people and said that you are dead in your sins. So it's not talking about non-existence. It's talking about a state of your spirit, okay? So eternal death is basically eternity in hell. It's torment. There's no life. I mean, you have consciousness. You do exist. It's just that you do not have that life. You do not have that blessing. You do not have that light. You do not have that pleasure. You have nothing but death. Continuing this excerpt here, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And since every person has sin, that means we all owe our very lives. Again, this is not talking about owing. We don't Okay, it says in the scriptures that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. God does not accept the sacrifice of the wicked. So if your sacrifice is your death, if you're dying for your sins, God doesn't accept that because it's it's done in wickedness because you don't give God anything that's wicked. You give him something valuable. I mean, look at Cain and Abel. Abel gave of the firstlings of the flock. He gave the first fruits of the flock. Whereas Cain, ah, he didn't give the first fruits of his, of his crops. He just, any old thing. Something that's not valuable. God was very angry with Cain. We know that. And God rejected his offering. In the same way, if you don't give God something that's good, God will reject it. And this excerpt continues to say, this is why Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He took our death for us, paying our debt for sin, so that anyone who believes in his name can have eternal life. The decision to accept or decline Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will affect you for eternity. You see, the death the Bible refers to is an eternal death. Here we go. Eternal death, which will happen to every person who does not have their sins forgiven. Apart from having a relationship with Jesus, no person will be forgiven for sin. This is because Jesus is the one who paid the debt for us by sacrificing his own life. So it is only through him that we can be saved. Oh, that sounds so lovely. That sounds so beautiful. Jesus died on the cross so that we don't have to die. But everybody still dies. So what, but then it says that Jesus paid the debt, but the debt is eternal death, eternal death. If Jesus paid eternal death, that means right now he's dead. Come on, think about this for a minute. How distorted and ridiculous, I mean, it sounds so beautiful on the outside. For people who don't really think at all, they just, oh yeah, that sounds right. Oh, that sounds good. For people who don't really use their brains, for people who don't have that logic, it's like, oh yeah, it just sounds wonderful. Sounds so lovely. Sounds so Christian. But come on, what is the debt? According to this, eternal death. Did Jesus pay eternal? Of course he didn't pay eternal death. If you're talking about physical death, he was only dead for three days at the most. If you're talking about spiritually dead, well, that's arguable that he was ever spiritually dead. It's like people who say, oh, well, uh, Jesus took the full wrath of God against sin so that we don't have to. He took the full wrath of God for us. He paid it all. He took it all for us so that we don't have the wrath of God. He took it all upon us. What is the full, full wrath of God against sin? It is eternity 
in hell. It is eternal torment. If Jesus took the full wrath of God, he is still in hell and he will be there forever. Okay? That is so wrong. It is so much an error. You see, Christian preachers and evangelists in the modern day are so desperate to try to make Jesus into some product and to make the gospel into some sales pitch. They're looking into all these kind of, you know, Christian cliches. Oh, he paid our debt. Listen, Jesus is the lamb of God. He is the lamb sacrifice. He is, Christians will tell you, Christians will tell you, he is the sin sacrifice. Guess what? The sin sacrifice does not work that way. No wonder the Jewish people who know the sacrificial laws look at Christians and go, you guys are clueless because a lot of the Christians are clueless. They say Jesus fulfilled to the T. Oh yeah, dotted every I, crossed every T of the sacrificial laws of the Old Testament. Yet they say he paid a debt. There's no debt. That's not how, that's not how the sacrificial law worked. The lamb sacrifice was not supposed to pay a debt for us. It wasn't to take a debt. Ask anybody who has spent an enormous amount of time researching and studying and devoting their lives to the sacrificial laws of the Old Testament, to the Torah especially. They will tell you that the the purpose of the sin sacrifice is when you are caught in some sin, you take that Sin sacrifice. And I'm not talking about someone catches you. I'm talking about you get uh, you get bound up in some sin. You, you have some issues overcoming sin. You take that lamb. You take that sin, sin sacrifice. You take it to the temple. You watch it being slaughtered and you connect with it. That's the whole idea. Connecting with it so that when that animal dies, you die with it. That sin dies with it. That's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Not Jesus paid it so I don't have to. No, I paid it with him. I died with him. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you are dead, as Romans chapter 6 says you should be if you believe in Jesus, you should be dead to sin. If you are dead to sin, and Christ lives in you, it means you you fulfill the law in yourself. You obey the Torah. You obey the law of God because sin is dead. You do not violate the law anymore. You are dead. This person said, therefore, don't reject the complete work on the cross or the grace. You see, the teaching is, you know, when Jesus said it is finished, he was talking about the complete, he completed, he finished the finished work of the cross. All of the requirements of salvation has been completed. Salvation is signed, sealed, and delivered. It is finished. That's the teaching. But is that what the scriptures tell us? That everything was finished on the cross? Before Jesus rose from the dead, everything is signed, sealed, and delivered. The complete work of the cross, it's complete. Is that what it says? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is vain, vain. And your faith is also vain, empty, empty. Verse 17, and if Christ is not risen, in other words, if, he, if everything stopped at the cross, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. That is not salvation. If it just stopped at the cross, if everything was complete and finished at the cross, it says your preaching is vain, your faith is vain, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. The cross was only a step towards salvation. In the next session, we will continue debugging this comment. If you found anything of value here, anything of interest, make sure you hit that thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed. Love you guys.